Hello, and welcome to the QuickBooks SDK Essentials training class. I'm Peter Vogel, Developer Support Supervisor for the Intuit Developer Network. When you have any kind of question or problem as you work with the QuickBooks SDK or any other IDN programs, technical or otherwise, it's my team that will be your point of contact to get the problem resolved. I've been with IDN for about two years now, uh, since July of 2002. Before that, I worked for a consulting firm, and that's how I was introduced to the QuickBooks SDK. We used QuickBooks for all our accounting, but because we have consultants all over the Bay Area, we used a web-based professional services automation tool for tracking the time each of us spent on a job for a particular client. We had two accountants spending two days two times per month to get reports from the tool and enter the data into QuickBooks invoices. I knew there had to be a better way. Fortunately for us, SDK 1.0 was just entering beta, so I attended one of the IDN's earliest seminars and took a day to write a tool that retrieved data from the PSA tool and generated hundreds of QuickBooks invoices. From two accountants two days two times per month to one accountant double-clicking on an icon one, twice a month. Like the Remington Razor Man, I was so impressed I joined the company. So today we'll be talking about a quick overview of the SDK and how you use the SDK to communicate with QuickBooks. Then we'll take the rubber to the road and, and I'll do a quick demo of accessing QuickBooks from uh, Microsoft Access. And then we'll get into the gory details of how everything worked there. Finally, we'll do a whirlwind tour of the extra features of the SDK that we don't have time to go into detail on. And we'll talk about frequently asked questions and some resources for further study. I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with the IDN value proposition. You understand why this is a win for you as you integrate with QuickBooks and create a solution that your uh, customers have been asking for. We under you understand why this is a win for Intuit and why Intuit actually created an entire business unit, the Intuit Developer Network, to support you and help you to be successful. And you've already downloaded the SDK or are about to do so. And you just want some instruction about how it works, how to get started, and make that first conversation with QuickBooks work for you. And just uh, to time set, it's uh, the summer of 2004. QuickBooks 2004 is out and supports SDK 3.0, QBXML 3.0. And SDK 4.0's features have been announced on the website. So now let's get into a quick overview of the software development kit. First of all, it helps to understand some of the design principles behind the SDK. When Intuit first started considering building an, an SDK for QuickBooks, we thought that we would talk to our small business users and understand what their needs are with respect to integration from third-party applications. And number one answer that we got from everyone was that they needed to be in control of their data. They didn't want an application to access their data without their prior approval. So the core design principle behind the SDK is that the small business user is always in control of their data. They can authorize that connection and you're good to go. We also wanted it to be standards based. We heard that from our developers uh, as we built a developer council to advise us on that first SDK uh, package. So it's XML based. It uses Windows COM at HTTPS on, when you're talking to QuickBooks Online Edition and SOAP protocols as well for remote data sharing. We wanted one accounting spec that worked across versions of QuickBooks, and that's QBXML. We wanted it to be extensible as, as we uh, apply additional development resources to QuickBooks. We wanted to be able to extend your ability to access QuickBooks data. And you can see that in the succession from QBXML 1.0 through QBXML 3.0 and 4.0 to come soon. And finally, it needed to be robust. There needed to be logging of what happened so that you can help your users to understand uh, and, and so that you can diagnose problems that occur. And we wanted to have error handling and recovery. So if a catastrophic error ha happens, such as a blue screen of death, when you're sending, an error, uh, sending a message to QuickBooks, you can determine whether that message was actually received and processed by QuickBooks or whether things went wrong before then. So what versions of QuickBooks actually support the SDK? 
Well, it was introduced with QuickBooks Desktop on the U U.S. edition in 2002, and it is support has been supported since then, the U.S. editions 2002 through 2004. The enterprise solutions, all flavors, and that includes manufacturing, retail, professional services, etc. Similarly for QuickBooks Premier editions, all flavors, and QuickBooks Pro. In Canada, they first supported the SDK in QuickBooks 2003 with the QBXML 2.0 for Canada, CA specification, and that support continues with QuickBooks 2004 with a 3.0 CA spec, and we expect that to continue. And the online edition, which began supporting the SDK in November of 2002. QBXML is the native language of the SDK. It has a request response model. Uh, so you send a request to QuickBooks, and QuickBooks responds with the data that you asked for. It's a very simple COM API, basically five methods to establish the communication and exchange the data with QuickBooks. And that basic functionality is a part of QuickBooks. It is installed with QuickBooks 2002 through 2004. So what's actually in the SDK? Well, it begins with the documentation. We have five manuals. There's the technical overview, which goes into some of the things that I'll be talking about today. And I'll be going into a little bit more depth in some areas, and the technical overview goes into some depth in other areas. Then there's the concepts manual. And the concepts manual is uh, kind of what I think of as your French grammar book in high school or something like that. You kind of get the idea of how to speak French. And finally, there are the developer's guides for QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online Edition, and the QuickBooks Foundation classes, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The developer's guides I think of as learning how to make that phone call to France so that you can actually um, talk. First you learn how to speak French, and then you make that phone call to France. That's kind of the order that I recommend that you read the documents, and we'll see that in a roadmap a little bit later on. Uh, then there are, there's the on-screen reference, which is uh, an online HTML-based interface that allows you to look at every single request and every single response. I think of this as the French-English dictionary to help you understand everything that you can say to QuickBooks and the responses you'll get back. Then we get into sample programs and sample XML requests. We have samples in Visual Basic, in C++, C Sharp, and several other languages. Finally, there are several tools. We have the Q QBFC library, an object-based COM API, to wrap QBXML. And again, we'll get into those details later. There's a tool to help you validate your XML. So if your application builds XML, sends it to QuickBooks, and you get back a parsing error, the validator will give you a much more detailed response that tells you where your XML has actually gone wrong. There's a very simple send and receive tool so that you can prototype the XML that you intend your application to build outside in a simple editor or whatever, send it to QuickBooks, and get back the response so you can understand how you're going to parse that response as well. And several more tools that we'll talk about as we go through the Whirlwind Tour later. So first of all, you choose your methodology. How are you going to talk with QuickBooks? QBXML is really the assembly language of QuickBooks. You are responsible for constructing those XML requests and parsing the responses. It's really ideal if your environment speaks XML natively. If you have a language that allows you to quickly and easily build XML documents and to parse those documents and, and get the data you need, then QBXML might be the right choice for you. Then there's QBFC. I think of this as the C++ of QuickBooks because it's really an object-oriented approach, COM-based, that is really excellent for languages that speak COM naturally, such as Visual Basic. And we'll go into great detail about QBFC in this presentation. Finally, there are third-party developer tools out there that really allow you to focus on your application logics, uh, logic and not QuickBooks. They're focused on specific environments and high-level abstractions of the QuickBooks data. For example, uh, if you need to talk ODBC, then there's a third-party tool out there that will let you talk ODBC. If you prefer not to think in terms of a customer ad request and a customer 
response, then you might look into the high-level objects where it's just a customer object that you deal with and it has add methods and so forth. There are lot, several libraries out there that do that sort of thing. So what's supported in the SDK? Well, most data, lists and transactions, your customers, your employees, your vendors, your items, and so forth. You can query, add, modify, and delete most of those things. Similarly with transactions, there's invoices, sales receipts, and so on. Again, you can query, add, and delete most of those, and modify some of them. The depth of the support there really varies with the QuickBooks version. QuickBooks 2002 with SDK 1.0 and 1.1 has the most limited support, although still very useful for most applications. And with each successive version, we've gone deeper into the QuickBooks data to give you a broader access. And the version of QuickBooks determines the QBXML version supported, and therefore what data you can and cannot get to. With SDK 3.0 and QuickBooks 2004, we introduced two new concepts. The concept of a data event that lets your application know when somebody has done something within QuickBooks, changes to lists and transactions and so forth as well as UI events that allow you to add menu items and get notification of company files opening and closing. That's the overview. Let's look at how you actually communicate with QuickBooks. I'm going to do things in a little reverse order here from what I would recommend in the documentation. We're just going to learn how to, how to phone France here. So the basic framework is very simple. You open a connection to QuickBooks, you begin your session with the company file, then you go into basically a loop of constructing some set of request messages, sending that request to QuickBooks, getting back the response messages, and handling them however is appropriate for your application. When you're all done, you can continue constructing, sending, receiving, and so forth as your application needs. When you're done communicating with QuickBooks, you simply end the session and close the connection. Like I said, five very simple, straightforward, open, begin, send, end and close. So how do you open that connection to QuickBooks? How do you call France? Well, the API is open connection. You provide an application ID and an application name. The application ID can be an empty string for now, and when you actually list your application with the Solutions Marketplace, if you're a premier member of IDN, then you can provide the app ID that's provided to you when you register your application. Then you provide the application name. This is the name as you want it to appear to the QuickBooks administrator who needs to approve that connection. And we'll see that in action a little bit later. This call will start QuickBooks if necessary and check whether the executable attaching is digitally signed. That will affect the authorization dialog that the user sees later. Then you're ready to begin a session with a particular company file. Again, the API is very simple. You call begin session, providing a path to a company file and the mode with which you want to open that file. The company file can be a path or it can be an empty string if you just want to use the company file currently open in the QuickBooks UI. If, you're going to open, if your application is going to connect to QuickBooks in the background, then you do need to provide that company file path. Your open mode is very straightforward. If you want single user mode, some uh, requests, such as in inventory adjustments, require the single user mode. Otherwise, you can be in multi-user mode, or you can indicate that you don't care what mode it's open in. That way you can be sure that your call will succeed if QuickBooks is able to open the file at all. Make sure that that correct company file is open in the correct mode, and if it's not, you'll get an error because QuickBooks can only have one company file open at any given time and it will display that authorization dialog to the user if necessary. Then you construct your set of request messages. If you're using QBXML, you're just building a string, although I don't recommend just concatenating strings, as that is the surest path to insanity. The most reliable method to build a QBXML string is to use an API built around XML, such as a DOM API like MSXML, that's freely available and convenient and easy to use. If you prefer that object-oriented approach, there's the QuickBooks Foundation classes. It's a nice class hierarchy, COM-based. 
And I think of this really as a QBXML specific DOM API. You don't have to deal with directly composing QBXML. And this can frequently lead to far less code as the API is specifically designed for QBXML rather than the much more general XML APIs. And when IntelliSense is available, this really rocks because you hit the dot and you can immediately see all the properties and functions available to you for any given QBFC object. And we'll see that in action when we do the demo a little bit later. So what is a request? It's just an XML string, and you'll see several examples of this in our session today.